I'm speaking today with Piyush Gupta, the CEO of DBS Bank. It's been one year and a little bit since he was appointed CEO in November 2009. And we're talking to him on a day um, after his first year's results have just been announced. Thank you very much for speaking to us. So thank you for having me, Manu. Uh, what have you learned from, from the year that is passed in, in leading DBS? Well, you know, some things are pretty common to leading any large organization. So when we um, started at the end of 2009, uh, the first two or three months, uh, we figured very quickly that there were some fundamental things that we needed to put in place to uh, get the bank focused in the right direction. Uh, and, uh, you know, we did a lot of that. Um, we can talk a little bit about what those were. Uh, but uh, at the end of the year, I feel pretty good about where we are in the journey that we had outlined. And so like everything in life, it's all in the execution. I feel good about how we've been able to execute so far. At the time that you became CEO, the balance sheet was, um, to find a better word to describe it, is moribund. I mean, it, had, it, was, it is the largest bank in, in Singapore. Um, it had a, a huge market share of uh, the asset base in Singapore. but um, you know, the return on assets were challenged um, and the balance sheet was fundamentally weak in a sense. What does it take to succeed in commercial banking in today's Singapore? Well, actually, let me, let me correct you. The balance sheet was a problem, but it wasn't that we had a very high asset market share. If anything, we had a disproportionately low asset market share in Singapore. Our problem is very simple. We have over 50% market share of savings accounts in Singapore. That's over $50 billion in deposits. And unless we figure a smart way to put those deposits to work, we'll always have what I call an unbalanced balance sheet. So we have a lot of money, but you can't put it to work, and that is a drag on your uh, interest margins. So what we do is take that extra money and we put it to work in the markets, which means that you're very interest rate vulnerable. In up cycles, you make a lot of money. In down cycles, you don't make money. And that's been one of the biggest problems with DBS. So not enough Singapore dollar assets. So the trick to converting uh, the asset to the balance sheet and making it more uh, active and vibrant was fundamentally this. We needed to figure a way to improve our position in the Singapore dollar loan segment. Uh, if you look at our history, we lost about 20 percentage points of market share in Singapore mortgage loans between the turn of the century 2000 and now in 10 years. So two percentage points a year for 10 years. This is the combined DBS POSB. The combined DBS POSB. At its peak, our market share was 43-44% of mortgages. It came down to as low as 23-24% market share. And one of the reasons for that is that we were just not focused on the value of the mortgage as a business proposition for us. We weren't focused on distribution, etc., etc. So one thing we did early uh, in our game last year, we created a corporate treasury function. Uh, we didn't have one in DBS. And what the corporate treasury did is something which a lot of banks have done uh, uh, quite successfully, which is behavioralized assumptions around deposits and assets. And once we did that, it became quite clear that we had a real problem because the duration of our balance sheet was zero. Now, banks make money by going up the yield curve. So if your duration is zero, no wonder you don't make a good return on asset on your, on your lending. Uh, and so by recognizing that, we were able to change the way we priced and, and, and priced for, for mortgage loans, actually all uh, sing dollar loans, that allowed us to improve duration. And so through most of this year, we've been able to do fixed rate lending up to three and five years. That's something the competition can't do. They don't have our deposit base. So we can change the nature of our balance sheet without dropping pricing, but just going up on the duration. So if we take um, the composition of balance sheet or the uh, dynamics of the balance sheet being making money on the organic business, making money on the treasury front, uh, and also there is the capital aspect, which is you know by parking money in, 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 in derivatives and so on. Um, which of these three components uh, you know, uh, turn the tide for you in, in that sense? Actually, I would say two of the three. So the first and most important thing that we did was organic which is essentially start building out the Singapore dollar loan book, right? By, by going uh, duration and distribution, actually, both. We started using our branches to sell. We were early using branches only as servicing channels, so we started converting that to a sales process and uh, by going up duration, so that was one. But the second thing we did is, you know, even after all of that, we are $50 billion long. So we put in place, uh, through that same corporate treasury, a far more nuanced process 
for how we put those surpluses to work. Uh, what kind of asset classes we wanted to go in, what kind of tenors we wanted to go in, what kind of yields we wanted to get. And by putting some pretty simple tools, and you know, I'm a simple kind of person, so risk models are one thing, but the tools we put in are very simple. We'll put 10 billion into this kind of asset class, we'll put another 10 billion into liquidity instruments, we'll put another 10 billion into XYZ, that allowed us to get a handle on how we use the surpluses as we put them out into the markets, into treasury investment portfolio. So that's allowed us to improve our yield on the treasury investment portfolio uh, as well. On what you call capital and derivatives, we really don't uh, run prop positions on derivatives uh, pretty much at all. So we really use this as a customer flow to support our customer uh, activities. So that really has limited impact on our uh, balance sheet or our, our name. How much of that involved you pushing the regulators to you know, help expand your, your investment base uh, and how much um, of what you wanted to do was, was e easily absorbed within the Singapore market. Do you think that what you're doing um, will also help to you know, expand the, the, the Singapore capital market um, industry to be able to, you know, to, to support an a, a, a aggressive bank like DBS? Actually, we haven't had uh, made too much uh, uh, change in the regulatory frame as yet. And the fact is, Singapore has a fundamental macroeconomic uh, situation, which is we are a saving surplus country. Uh, our fixed capital formation is a very small percentage of the national GDP relative to the savings in the system. And we at DBS are just at the coal face. So we mirror the, the national uh, income accounts. We have long deposits and we don't have enough investment products. We've been in conversation with the government and with the regulators for different ways to create incremental uh, asset products in Singapore. Right. So we've, we've talked about covered bonds as a possibility. We've talked about more issuances from the Treasury as a possibility. But these are not easy solutions because it is really an imbalance at a macro country level. So most of what we were able to achieve was really of our own doing by figuring out and A, gaining market share in the Sing dollar market. We gained market share in every category in the last year, in mortgages, in credit cards, in unsecured loans, in business loans. So that's not growing the pie. That's just getting a larger share of the pie, uh, which we were able to do. Okay. 